Talk Today is Vienna in the heart of Austria and I'm here with Yarek who gave a talk today which I sadly missed called Lambda Core Hardcore. Yeah. So what kind of hardcore elements of lambdas did you delve into today? So it, it was really a scientific uh, talk, so not really hardcore in terms of JVM but hardcore how you do really hardcore maths with Java. That sounds like a contradiction in terms. Is, does Java lend itself well to maths? Yeah, so it's really, I wanted to show that, that the uh, complicated mathematic terms are, can be easily seen and tried with Java. So that was really exactly the, the point. So what is it about Java that enables you to do that? Is it when you prove these complicated mathematical functions, are you proving the function or are you doing anything with large volumes of data? Or? No, no. So basically, I, my talk was about lambda calculi, it's, so it's not that uh, complicated in terms of the data volume or the whatever, it's complicated in uh, understanding. It's, it's math that it's not really, um, that nobody can easily trace, but with Java, we, it, it can may help in imagination, how um, it may uh, make it easier to Im for the typical developer to understand what is this all about. Yeah. So, can you give me an example of one of the calculations? So, the, the calculations we tried today were simply basic, like 2 plus 2 or whatever, but the point of the talk was uh, lambda calculus. And lambda calculus is that we don't have numbers, as we know, like integers or whatever. Everything in a lambda calculus is lambda is a function. So, instead of having 2, I had a function that was representing 2. Instead of having plus, I had a function that was representing a plus, and then I had, for instance, three as another function, and then it was really like that shown in Java to show that uh, using those three functions, I can create another function which at the end represents five, for instance. Like, so it's really this kind of thing can we learn at studies, and it's still hard if you don't have good tools to really debug it, and that was the, the, the point, yeah? That reminds me a lot of a book I tried to read once called Understanding Computation, where it stepped through building your own compiler by building up functions like that. Okay, so I don't know this book, but <laughs> I, would, I wouldn't say it was like really, oh, maybe it was like really building, uh, maybe not compiler, but subset of Java. So basically what I've shown today is a very small subset of Java. Let, let's say that we don't have anything with, from Java, we have only like uh, defining a function, and function application. It's very, very small language, but it's good enough to represent everything that we know from math, like natural numbers, real numbers, yeah, e even computations like factorial or whatever. That's very cool. What about imaginary numbers? Yeah, <laughs> that is not a problem. As in mathematics, once you have natural numbers, everything up to imaginary goes very quickly. It's like you can create them using this. But uh, the, really, the, the biggest point, the hardest point is really to start with zero. What is zero? What is one? That's the hardest point. Once you have them and you have natural numbers and everything is just automatic. So very mathematicians know that. So what inspired you to get started on this talk? Uh, I, I'm not sure if I should say, but it was really like... <laughs> I, I did well, a couple of years ago a talk at the Java user group in Wrocław uh, about lambdas in Java 8 that were coming. And I, I tried to explain where, where the term lambda came from, and so I told there, people that there is this lambda calculi that it's described. And then we had, after after party, let's say, after the, after the event, after drinking possible simple, <laughs> a little bit of beer, we get an idea, oh, maybe we could do it with Java. That would be funny. And indeed it was. So, <laughs> oh, so did you learn a lot about Java when you did it? Or? Uh, so sorry, I didn't understand the question. Did you learn a lot more about Java when you did it? Uh, not really about Java, I would say, but uh, I learned about functional programming because this, this talk was re representing that even this, this lambda calculus is the purest uh, functional programming that one can imagine. It's really so pure that you don't even have numbers like integers, whatever. It's just function and, and applying functions. And indeed, what I tried to show that talk, it's even with this very simple language you can do everything. It means functional programming, pure functional programming, is good enough to do everything. And so that's the lesson, yeah? It's just, there's no excuse. You can do everything with functional programming. It's only your choice or you may... <laughs> I guess I better get started with functional programming then. Yeah? Yeah, I've been meaning to do um, the, the website called Coursera, Functional Programming in Scala. Yeah, but okay, yeah, Scala is uh, better for that, but uh, I would say better, a little bit better. In Java, you have to write a 
a lot of yeah, boilerplate code, but it's still good enough. I would say it's better maybe to start with language that you know, so maybe like Java, and then maybe, because to, to be familiar, to not do two things at once. So I, I, I did it. I, I was learning Scala and functional programming at the same time. It was really hard for me. Okay, cool. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing your talk.